Math 3, Unit 1, Section 5. Today we're talking about piecewise functions. So piecewise defined functions have different parts of the domain assigned to different parts of the function. So what we're looking at is that we basically have different graphs or different equations on the same graph. Okay, and so if you look right here, we have x squared minus 4 if x is less than negative 1. And here we have 3 to the x plus 1 if x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Couple things you want to notice, and you're going to want to get highlighters out, and I can get out my pens here in a minute too. But notice these signs, and that only one of them can have the equal to sign. So only one of the graphs can be equal to that value, not both of them. Okay, so I just made a note there that only one should have an equal to sign. Okay, so this next question says, find f of zero. The first thing that you need to think about, and I'm going to go ahead and number these equations, so that's going to be equation one and equation two. So which equation would have zero in it? The first equation or the second equation <coughs> based on this information? Okay, the second one because zero is greater than negative one, correct? And so when you're finding f of zero, we are going to use the second equation. So we're going to plug in zero into this equation for x, and so we have three to the zero plus one which makes three to the first, which equals three. And so the value for f of zero is three. And I'm gonna write that as an ordered pair because that would be a point at zero, three. Okay, any questions there? So f of negative three, which equation will I use for that? Very good, the first equation. So we're going to take negative 3, plug it into the first equation. Now on this one, do we see how this is negative 3 is going to be the x value? And so we will actually be squaring negative 3. And negative 3 squared is 9. And 9 minus 4 equals 5. And so that ordered pair would be negative 3, 5. Which equation would we use for negative 1? Very good. And why 2? Good, because that's the one that has the equal 2 sign. And so if we want to find negative 1, we need to use the one with the equal 2 sign. So we plug that in there. We get 3 to the negative 1 plus 1, which is 3 to the 0. And anything to the 0 power is 1. Good. And so that ordered pair is negative 1, 1. Okay, do you have any questions on this first example? <coughs> We're good? Okay, g of x example, next. Again, I want you to notice, see the value of 2? This one with the value of 2 is less than or equal to, and this one is less than. So the value, whenever you have that value where the value is the same, only one of the equation can have one of those signs. 
Okay, they could both have the less than sign, meaning like you'd have an open circle at both spots, but they can't both have an equal to sign, okay? And normally always one will have an equal to and one will have a less than. Okay, so again, let's label these as equation one and equation two. So g of zero, which equation would that be for? It'll be one, because this one right here is saying the values from negative one to two. Is zero in between negative one and two, or is zero between two and four? So which equation are we gonna use? The first one, zero is in between the values of negative one and two. Okay, and so that's equation one. Now, do you see how there's no x value here to plug in zero for x into this equation? So guess what that answer is? Seven. Just seven, very good. And so as an ordered pair, that's zero, seven. <coughs> okay, what equation would I use for two? If you said one, you're correct. Why is one the correct equation? Because it has the equal to sign with it. So that means that it's equal to, and what would be my answer for this one? Seven. Because again, there's no x for me to plug two into, the answer is just seven. So that ordered pair is two, seven. Four, which equation will I plug four into? The second equation. So on that one, we have five minus three absolute value of four minus one. What's the absolute value of four minus one? Three, and then what's the absolute value of three? Three, so I have five minus three times three. So we have five minus nine, which equals negative four. Oops. And so that ordered pair will be four, negative four. Yes? Oh, I just wanted you to notice how one of them has a less than or equal to and one of them has a less than. So see how these both have the value of two? Mm -hmm. Only one of them can have the equal <coughs> to sign. No, yeah, no. So it's actually the whole thing. So values from negative one to two and from two to four. I was just pointing out that, see how they both have the number two, only one of them can have the equal two sign. Okay, so where, which equation could I use for negative one? Kind of the first one. The only thing is, though, is do you see how it doesn't have the equal to sign at negative one? So when we get that answer for equation one, what are we going to do with it? So we get the value of seven. So you'd have the order pair negative one, seven, but the circle would be open. Good. Okay, what about the value of five? <coughs> what do you think about five? Is the value of five in between either of these? No. So will five be on the graph? No. So this one is no solution. And the reason is, is that it is not within the domain. Yes? Exactly. So anytime it doesn't have the equal to sign, it's open. So they're really, if it really doesn't equal this value, it's an open circle. Are you okay with that?
Okay, other questions? All right, so let's go ahead and move on to this first example. So we're going to use what we use in lesson four. And basically, we're going to end up putting two graphs or two equations on one graph. Okay, so where should we have a highlighted line? At three. So let's go ahead and make our highlighted line at three because we know it's going to change at three. So the difference here is that we're going to have one equation where it's less than 3, and we're going to have a different equation when it's greater than 3. Okay? Also notice on this one, with the inequality signs, remember only one of them can have an equal to sign. So this one, it's equal to this value. And we might also call that that we'd end up having a closed circle. And since this one is not equal, we would have an open circle for that graph. Okay, we're going to number these again, <coughs> equation 1 and equation 2, so we can do a little work for each of them. So I'm going to start with number 1. What type of graph will this make? It'll make a line. Very good. Okay, and my equation is y equals negative one-third x plus 2. So what is my starting point for this graph? 0, 2 is correct because there's nothing in parentheses with the x and then we have a 2 for the y. What is my slope on this one? Negative 1 third. So let's go ahead and go to our graph and then see if we need to end up plugging in the value for 3. Okay? <coughs> so we start at 0, 2 which is 0 and then up 2. That is not on my highlighted line, so I don't have to think about it too much there. And then from there, I'm going to use my slope, which is down 1, right 1, 2, 3. Okay, is this going to be open or closed here? Close. Close. And how do we know that? Good. It had the equal to sign on here. Okay, and so I already found the value when I hit that line, so I don't need to plug in my 3 value again. And this is a line, and we're doing all values that are less than 3. So which direction am I going to draw my line? To the left, okay? And so we are going to go ahead and draw this line to the left. Okay, any questions on this graph? Okay, so next we're going to go to equation 2. What type of graph will be equation 2? Also a line. And that equation is y equals 4. So y equals 4, if we go up 1, 2, 3, 4, y equals 4 starts right here, and it's a straight line, okay? But on the highlighted line, that needs to be what? An open circle. And then it's just a straight line there going to the right because on this one, it was x is greater than So ask me questions about this. Okay, no questions? So now we need to state the domain and range. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, who has a question? Sorry. 
How did I get the y value on that one? Okay, so you know how this is f of x on the on the left? You can always think you can always think of f of x as y, okay? And so all we're doing, just like I did here, y equals this equation, this is saying y equals 4. And so the line y equals 4 would be a straight line through the value at y equals 4, but because of my domain restriction, I have to start at the value where x is negative 3, and then it only goes to the right that amount. Did that clear things up? Okay, was there another question over here somewhere? Nobody else has questions? You sure? Okay, so now we need to talk about our domain and range. So looking at the graph, my domain starting at the left, and if you notice in the directions, it told us to state it in interval and inequality, so we're gonna start to state it both ways. We have an arrow going to the left, so that means my domain is gonna start with what? Negative infinity. Remember that anytime you use parentheses or infinity, it's a parenthesis. Okay, as we go along on the domain, we go, and then do you see here how there's an open circle, but then there's also a closed circle? So that means we're good. We just keep going. So we keep going, and then there's an arrow on the right side, so that means we're going to go to what? Very good, positive infinity. And we use a parenthesis again. Okay. Now, range is our y values going up and down. So my first range value is right there. What value is that? One. Is it a closed or open circle? So that means that I'm going to write one, and we're going to use a bracket. Okay? And then as we go up, there's an arrow there. But as we keep going up, we see a circle here. But because there's an arrow or a line going the other direction, that open circle and this line as it continues, they'll end up making a point that works for our range. And so, and this line just goes straight this way, but because this one's going up this way, that means the range is going to go which? To infinity. And we also use a parenthesis. And then now we need to state that in interval or inequality notation. And so inequality notation on this first one would be negative infinity is less than x is less than positive infinity. Notice there are no equal to signs, so pay attention on your quizzes. Okay, and then for the range, this is at 1 is less than or equal to y is less than infinity. Okay, this one has an equal to sign because it did equal 1. Okay, we only don't use the equal to sign on infinities or when something's not equal. Do we have questions on either of these? Okay, so we're going to do one more example for today. Okay, so where is my domain restriction? Where should I highlight a line? At zero. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. So on my graph here, I'm going to highlight 0. So I know that my equations are going to be different to the right and the left at 0. So we have two equations. I'm going to number them equation 1 and equation 2. And we're going to start with equation 1. And I want you to state what is that graph going to look like. Very good. It is an absolute value. Now with absolute value you guys that's the one the equation that makes a V shape. Okay so I'm gonna write the equation and instead of writing f of x I'm just gonna write y equals negative absolute value of x plus 2. Where would be my starting point for this graph? <coughs> Very good. And that's also called my vertex. And that is at negative 2, 0. Because inside the absolute values, we'd set that equal to 0, which makes negative 2. And nothing's being added at the end, which is 0. When I go to negative 2, 0, I can go ahead and make a solid point there because it's not on my highlighted line. We're good. Okay. Now, can I use my slope on this? 
Yes, and how do I know that I can use my slope? It's going to end up making straight lines. And my slope is negative 1 over 1. If there isn't a value in front, we know there's always a 1. And since there's a negative there, that makes it a negative 1. Okay, so from my vertex, we're going to go down 1, right 1, and then also down 1, left 1. Because remember with parabolas or quadratics and also with absolute values, they are symmetrical. And I want to get to my highlighted line, so I'm going to go down one, right one again. And is it going to be open or closed here for me? Open. And why is it open? Very good. It doesn't have the equal to sign on there. Okay? And then this one would be closed over here. And so then you're just going to draw your V shape graph. But we stop at the highlighted line. Questions on this one? Okay, so let's do our second equation now. And what type of equation is the second one? Very good, quadratic. And so with our quadratic, I'm going to write that as y equals x squared minus 2. On this one, when I get to the value at 0, it will be open or closed? Closed. And again, that's because of the equal to sign. And so what's my starting point on this? 0, negative 2. So if you notice, nothing's in parentheses with the x value. And so that means the x value is 0 and then the minus 2 at the end. So 0 and then negative 2, do you see how these end up at the same point? That's okay. We're just going to end up coloring that in now, okay, for this one because this one is closed. Okay, and then is it curving up or curving down? Up. And if you're not sure and you want to plug in values, you can. If Since we know this is curving up and this was my vertex, I'm just going to go ahead and draw a curve going up. You could, but for this, you don't have to if you know how it's supposed to go. And there's no other, like, focus points where I have to make sure it's correct. <coughs> so is that okay? Does that make sense? All right. Okay, any questions here? So now we need to talk about our domain and range. And so going from the left to the right on my for my domain, okay, we have an arrow. So that means we start with what? Very good. Negative infinity, parenthesis or bracket? Parenthesis. And as we move along, we get to another arrow, so that means it goes to positive infinity. Okay, for my range going down, like starting at the bottom and going up, I have an arrow, so that means negative infinity. And then it goes all the way to an arrow at the top, which means positive infinity. Okay, and if we write that in interval notation, I mean inequality notation, negative infinity, less than x, less than positive infinity. And then remember range in the middle is a y. I noticed that on some of your quizzes too, you're writing x's for the range when it should be y. Okay, questions here. All right.